Hello everyone. Welcome to our Foundry Dev stream. We are live. I hope everything is working as intended. It to... looks like it. Looks like it. Welcome to Foundry. Uh, this is the first in a series of dev streams we're going to do leading into early access May 2nd. Uh, I'm Mark. I'm one of the developers on Foundry, and this is the wonderful creator, Patrick. <laughs> Yep. Who is in Austria and I'm in Vancouver, Canada. So uh, you unlikely uh, pair of developers. Patrick is a, a vampire and sleeps just in the weirdest hours. So it works out great for us. <laughs> you always have to start out with that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like what time is it in Austria? It's just 7 p.m. It's not that bad, okay. Mark. Not too bad, yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah, Patrick's, Patrick's got a long uh, night ahead of him. But yeah, I mean, uh, we've been working on this game since forever, and we're, we're super excited to, to finally get to show what we've been up to uh, on Foundry. Uh, Patrick, maybe tell us a little bit about how Foundry started. Sure. Well, first of all, it started almost six years ago, so that it has been a long, long time we're working on that one. So I'm really happy and relieved to finally get this out to you, to a wider audience. Um, well, the idea here was pretty simple. Factory game combined with first person voxel gameplay. Uh, the inspiration behind that is probably pretty obvious, right? So, and that is what I started working on. and. This is the result yeah. now. Yeah, because you're a big Factorio player. Like you've been working on this long before Satisfactory, so it was it, it was more like your love of Minecraft and uh, modded Minecraft, where, where yeah. you have all these factory elements and, and Factorio. So it's it's interesting how your approach is different from some of the other games. Uh, and uh, for me, at least, like I I'm. I'm originally from uh, Clay Entertainment. I did like games like Don't Starve Together and Hot Lava, and uh, some of the other folks here are from Clay as well, uh, with with Johan uh, having made Oxygen not included. So like, we we come from this like very cutesy uh, feeling uh, sim games, and Foundry to me was like the first factory game that felt chill enough that I could like really get into factory games. And so that that was what really attracted me to this project. It's like you did an excellent job of like letting people focus on the mechanics. Like even the grid based building is is quite a big thing here, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the fact that everything is on the grid is one of the uh, things that were very important to me. And I think uh, it's very important for many people who enjoy the genre because it it just makes things a little easier to have everything perfectly aligned. It's you now when I take a belt here, you see the grid is displayed on the floor, on the terrain. You can build precisely how you want it. It's easy to measure the distances. It shows you how long, how big distances are. It's easier to position larger buildings. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't think I had OCD before I started working on this project, but now anytime uh, I build something in another game and it doesn't line up, it drives me nuts. So it's, <laughs> it'll be interesting if, if that that's the, the effect we have on, on the gaming public. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it's not just a building on the grid, right? You Like you're flying over a, a, hit, a tunnel here, but it's you actually can dig, you can modify the terrain. It's got the full suite of like deformable, diggable, constructible stuff, right? Absolutely. So every voxel here can be removed and replaced if necessary. So you can shape the world as you like it. This big pit you're, see you're seeing here was a former mine. So there was an ore patch here, but it was completely dug up. So now this is just a remembrance of progress. I can try to find another one to show you how a big ugly crater in the floor <laughs> as, as like just a monument to the progress we've made. This this is actually one of the, the test bases uh, some of the developers were, were making to test out some of the content, early access content. So this is, you know, 
30, 40 hours of gameplay this base, or, or how, how long do you think they, they spent on this? Yeah, this is roughly a 30 to 40 hour base. It, with with know, experience players. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. It is extremely difficult to measure time requirements uh, or how long it takes someone because you can rush it or you can play chill and do stuff that doesn't immediately give you a, like a research progress but like you spend time building some of the creative decor system parts like you know this is a great example here uh, our dev who made this base Michael decided to create a flying belt without any support now that looks a little bit funny uh, he did this because he was running out of time but you know if you want to spend a little more time create some support to make stuff look more realistic which this doesn't really what I just built but you know you get the idea then you need more time so, uh, you know, I see some comments kind of like trying to figure out what makes Foundry so unique from, you know, because this is a genre where there's a lot of great games already. We were talking a bit, a bit about the terrain and how you can actually deform and dig and, and all the underground mining elements. But there, there's a bit more to it. Like we're in some of the dev videos we're going to do over the next few weeks as we lead into early access, we're going to talk about some of the focus on scale and the end game and what Foundry is actually all about. Because for a lot of people that have played this on itch and, and the early alpha builds, they've, they've sort of seen the systems, but not like how they're all going to come together. And there's uh, there's some really exciting stuff. We're not going to show too much in this video, uh, but we're going to show over the coming weeks about what you're actually building this factory for and uh, why you're going to make it so darn big. Because this game to me is all about scale. Like you build these super duper massive factories that just like I don't know. I can run around these all day and just be like in awe of, of what they built here. Yeah, we we try to have multiple additional mechanics on top of what is already known uh, as established features in the factory gaming genre. Of course, we have all the standard stuff like belts, pipes and the rows of machines that you're used to, like you can see here. But of course, we're trying to add new stuff on top. Uh, one of the things are the assembly lines. Now this one isn't running uh, and I'll try to get that running for you during the stream but uh, where you can I'm going to show you things here first without it active. If those long let's call it snakes of rails that go through your factory and each of those rings attach new uh, objects to whatever is going across this line, this rail line on top. So we're like visualizing the production of the actual object. Uh, in this case, we're producing robots here on the screen. You see what it's doing, like this is attaching the, the left arm. This one is welding it together. So there are plenty of steps in the end the robot is painted and then it goes into this large structure we call a warehouse and from the warehouse our end products are actually sold uh, we haven't revealed yet around that actually but they're moved off the planet and over the upcoming uh, time to launch we'll reveal more and more details and yeah that's one of the core features here we're trying to to bring a change or like maybe not a change but like it feels like the logical next step to try to visualize how products are actually assembled and it's just one well, of many and i'll try to I, I get this running so yeah and i think that leads well into like talking about some of the most like what you know motivated you to make foundry because like when we talk about factory games you and i you, you talk a lot about how you launch the rocket in factorio and you talk about how you want to launch a whole bunch of them and and launch per minute and like all this crazy scale stuff that that really addicted you to the genre and 
a lot of the end game of Foundry is built around that sense of scale and like actually making building the focus, right? And so in a lot of ways, what we're hoping to show in, in the coming videos is how we've, our, our our take on the end game and actually making that uh, a core part instead of just being like, hey, I finished, I fired my rocket. That's just the beginning of, of where you start thinking about how to recombine these systems and scale, which uh, I think I'm really excited to show what we have for early access and then to grow it during the early access period based on player feedback. Because um, a game like this, we just we're going to need a ton of players to tell us what's fun, and what what doesn't work. Oh yeah. Um, so this is going to be early access. So we're only getting started. Or all the features we have in there will receive a lot more content. Oh, hello, Mark, dancing on the assembly line. Uh, so yes, we'll expand based on player feedback uh, and based on our own ideas. We have certain plans we believe would add extremely well to the base we have created and combined with that, we see what you, the audience, thinks and we'll adjust a bit based on that as well. So exciting times ahead. Yeah, no, we it, it's this weird thing where, where we actually launched the game on itch, like how long ago? So many years at this point, right? Um, um, yeah, <laughs> like three and a half years. I am. Um, we launched in late September, but I'm not sure which year it was. I guess it was three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we've had a, a lot of player feedback on earlier versions and we've like really honed in uh, a lot of the a lot of the systems. But the, the reality is a game like this for how complicated it ends up being is that we just need to get a ton of player feedback. We need to constantly be shipping and improving it. And uh, I think now that we're actually able to come back out into early access and, and share this game with everybody, things are just going to ramp up very quickly. I think we're, we're going to scale and it's going to be really exciting. Oh, yeah. We're looking yeah, no, it's a... very forward to being on Steam Early Access, finally. <laughs> right. It's just so much more fun when you're like sharing the game with people. It, it's it's why everyone gets into game dev, right? Like they it's it's to it's not to make the stuff. It's to share it with everybody. It's yeah, yeah. it was always the case on every project I have worked. But as soon as you have players in and feedback coming in, even if like people complain and something is not working as intended, that's the part that really motivates me and this is where the fun starts. So I'm looking forward to that a lot. There's a question about when they're going to mod in robot dogs. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> let's just come back for another uh, stream or two we got we got lots of cool stuff to show yeah um, and in yeah. regards to mod support in general uh the game was quite quite well designed with with mod support or i would say with content mod support in mind so that means it's uh designed in a way where it'll be easy to add new crafting recipes add new items uh basically do a a content overhaul, a content conversion. We're looking into allowing modding of completely new features as well, but that is not the priority for now. We're at the start focusing on content modding and it will be possible on the release of early access, but little disclaimer, it is not as polished as we eventually want it to be. So we're gradually improving the, the modding tools together with, with the community. Yeah, no, I, I think there, there's a lot more we want to do, but the, the funny part is, is that it's already, I've already seen a lot of great mods come out uh, on the itch version. And so I, I, I think in a lot of ways, the modding support we have is very, uh, is good compared to most early access titles. So <laughs> That might uh, be the case, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're coming out May 2nd into early access. You can wish list us now. That helps a ton if you're if you're interested in this at all. Uh, we don't have the price announced yet. Uh, that I, I don't know if that comes out with the launch trailer or, or when that that gets announced, but it, it very soon. Very soon. 
I'm just reading some of the comments here. We, you know, the, the stream here, we, we kind of figured we'd split it into two sections where we just like kind of talk about the game a bit amongst ourselves uh, and tell you about some of our design stuff for folks watching the VOD. Uh, but we also happy to take questions if people have any, um, you know, we're flying around a, a random base here and we're happy to show you the different parts if you're interested. Uh, we're going to talk more in depth in a future video about each of the systems, but this is kind of a, an overview of Foundry and kind of uh, getting used to, to doing these dev streams with you. Uh, itch itch uh, buyers will get Steam keys. Yeah, that everyone who's paid money to us gets Foundry. Like we, we've already uh, printed all the keys. We'll, we'll give them out uh, right when uh, when we launch. Uh, I don't think we were, we were, we looked at whether we could give people the keys early, but um, basically you can't, uh, you can't give so many pre-release keys out on Steam. Uh, it has to be uh, retail keys. So those are coming soon. And we're excited to, to get our itch community to come see what, how the game has changed. Yes. Um, so here, okay. currently showing so. off our, yep. What's some other question to have. take? No, I think this is really important. There's no lights on these. Uh, <laughs> and this is really bothering me. So that's what I'm going to be doing the rest of the stream. Uh, I, I was about to say, we're now showing the day night cycle and that it's getting dark. <laughs> and this is probably suboptimal for the stream. So we'll stay on this for a bit, but then I'll use the debug tools to make it brighter again. Um, I I'm was going to make my own sun. I don't need your sun. Okay. Go, go, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> uh, so while you answered the, the Steam key question, I was showing off this uh, magnificent building. We call it the Blast Furnace. And that's one of the other features uh, we I mentioned before we're trying to do to create something new for uh, the factory game genre. We have those buildings that are really massive and I'll change the time here because it's really hard to see against the sky. Yeah, here, there we go. So they're really big. Three towers on the side are hot air stoves. Um, they provide the blast furnace with the hot air it needs to operate and the way those are built is not the same way you would build uh, a small building, like a small building, you just select the item, place it, and, and it's there. But those large buildings, you actually need to place down a construction site. And then you've seen those ships going up and down. And some of them are transporting things, but others, namely the yellow ones here, are actually building the construction sites. So. As an example here, this is a radio tower. And when I open the modular building planner, I can click this and it shows the whole building and I can configure it the way I want to. Like I can remove this and make it smaller and uh, adjust various properties. Now the radio tower wasn't a great example in terms of variability because it just serves a very certain purpose. But when you look back at the blast furnace, for example, the larger you build it, the higher the throughput is, uh, the more energy it consumes. So this actually has some influence on how the building behaves, what properties it actually has. Um, you can customize things like the, the power source it's using, st stuff like that. Um, and you'll have to decide what, what's, uh, what kind of configuration suits your need. And yeah, you can use the construction industry buildings again to, to remove them or modify them. So that's, that's that. And yeah, I think it's an exciting feature. Uh, here in that you're you're having a little clipping on your mic, just heads up on that. I'm not not sure. I can't I can't hear it on on Twitch, so I, I don't know what it actually sounds like. It's not too bad. I'm hearing, but just heads up. 
Uh, okay. Biffa was asking, uh, like it sounds good to me, but I, I'm listening through Discord. Sure. Uh, Biffa was asking, is there stuff there in the game that has not been seen yet? There's a ton of stuff. Uh, obviously, like some of these these mega structures, Patrick's showing the mo the modular buildings, uh, which I think kind of like leans back to this concept of scale for this game that that we were talking about. Uh, we have a new underground mining system that's different than the itch version that uses uh, ore veins that uh, we'll maybe we'll, we'll preview in a bit. Uh, a whole bunch of new researches that were not in the demo and not in early access, or not in the itch build. Uh, and we have a narrative and end game loop uh, that people haven't seen yet. But I don't think anybody, nobody's played the uh, assembly lines either, right? Or or these ships for that matter. Like we have we have three nope. different types of uh, aircraft now in the game. <laughs> so we we've actually added a ton since the uh, since the demo build that that uh, I don't think anybody's played. I'm super excited to to show it all off. Yeah, I'm here flying to the um, underground mining to show off that a bit since it was asked. It was changed a little, but not massively. It, I think it was to future proof us for updates, right? Like before, before the way you used to mine in Foundry is you would put these big strip miners in and they would just mine forever in a straight line. Uh, but the problem with that is you want an infinite factory. And uh, also, if you want that to be the case, then the entire rock layer at that depth has to be the same ore, or eventually you run out. Uh, so we, we switched to these ore veins that let us put different resources around the planet at, at different locations that kind of make it a little more challenging. Like you have to lay out your base considering these look where these are placed. Um, and so you got, you know, discovering the ore veins and all that stuff is a whole, whole game loop and a whole discussion in and of itself. Yeah, so here we are. Um, the the underground rail miners are still there. They still move on tracks. They still excavate. There are still minecarts behind them that move things. They're currently not moving because it's all backed up. But I can place a container here, fill that in, and they'll start moving right away see there we go um so the way this works and the way we have changed it because it's kind of looks similar to everyone who has played the the previous version so previously we had those ore layers that were like everywhere you just had to dig to a certain depth and the ore was there and then you placed the layer uh, the the miner and then it mined endlessly inside that layer so that was a bit boring and it also caused us some issues with balancing so the way we adjusted it is you will have to use your scanner um and, and the map that, that assists you in this um, to find what we call an ore vein. This is this darker looking uh, type of rock. You'll have plenty of ways to find them. We have the handheld scanner. You have a scanning building, so you'll be able to locate those. Once you locate it, you need to excavate certain parts of it. This is currently this part. Uh, now this texture is still work in progress. It's not fully done. It'll be something that looks more like ore eventually, but you'll find those parts again with your scanner and you excavate the little cave around them and then you put your vein miner there that drills into this uh, this mineable part. It, it still creates the tunnels way longer than uh, it is right here. So they, they are not as long as they were before, but they still uh, they still make tunnels that look really, really cool. And after a, some, a certain point, the miner will hit the core of the ore vein. And once we hit the core, the machine stops. There's no more ore to mine, unless that's Let's another new elevator. cool feature. <laughs> yeah. Let's go up here. Bing. So the miners, Russell. once they reach the core, they, they stop until you're supplying the core. 
uh, you, you need to build something on top. We call that a fracking tower. You can see it here in the background. It basically pumps in fracking liquid and that makes the miners continue to mine. This is an option to convert an ore vein into an endless source of ore as long as you're supplying the liquid. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but you can keep it going. The, the motivation behind that was pretty simple. It, it always bothered me that in other games you, you build up your mining outposts and then at some point they're empty and well then you need to tear it all down or like ignore it and it doesn't serve yeah. any purpose anymore so we wanted to address that yeah and i think i think a lot of players had a, a similar feeling with our our resources and foundry they last a long time you're starting resources like as long as you need them to but it still feels bad in a game about scale to for it to run out so resources are unlimited once you develop the fracking technology and so that's that's the uh that's a secret we needed to just pump our our liquid slurry into the ore to get more out of it um uh, people are asking about movement uh jetpack is an upgrade you you have to research it and then there's actually jetpack movement speed tiers that let you navigate even faster there's a whole ton of locomotion stuff like we have like uh escalators and all this other uh infrastructure you can build because getting around as your base gets bigger is a big part of the game uh a lot of questions about console we don't have a console version yet uh we have light controller support the game works well on on steam deck and uh and i think it would play it excellently on console so uh i want to put it on console as soon as possible make sure to make sure to have your voices heard go go rally for console it would uh it'd be a lot of fun because i think this is a game that can introduce a lot of people to the factory genre that might have otherwise not been part of it we're gonna convert some minecraft players into uh into factory folks that's the hope <laughs> yeah i mean you said that in the beginning it's obviously heavily inspired by minecraft tech mods yeah but minecraft is like a game of lego right like it was such a an open sandbox and and you know it's amazing to like take that idea and turn it into this this fully separate game yeah uh is this normal that you can build that build in the air is it a bug cheek no you can build in the air it, it especially as you start building these more complicated and giant structures uh the jetpack is like essential you don't really need it for the first like 10 hours of the game 10 15 hours but as you start to scale up having a little bit of height makes it just so much easier like you you start with these tiny little buildings and you assemble them and then all of a sudden you have these rows and rows of complicated machines like circuitry uh which is you know it just gets complicated really quickly so we're we're trying to do things to make it more comfortable if you get hooked on the game yeah it's been a a long discussion if everything uh should require support before you can build it or if we just allow placing things uh in the air um eventually we settled on giving the freedom to the players it's it's up to you to decide if so me personally when i build something i always make sure everything is is, is at least somewhat realistic i, I build support mm -hmm. below everything but if you don't want to do that feel free to do so um it's we don't want to put limit rate limitations on you so it's your decision how your base should look and if you're aiming for something more realistic or if you want to keep things floating yeah uh, buffalo 99 just asked are the resources infinite like satisfactory or similar or finite like factorio and and uh, Unfortunately, you just missed us uh, touring the infinite mine, but uh, it's a mix. Uh, basically, the starting surface ores run out, uh, but there's a fracking system and ore veins that are endless. So uh, it's a mix. You have to research uh, and progress to get the infinite ores. Yes. Uh, people were asking a lot about uh, cosmetics and like uh, specifically around 
modular buildings. I think there are there hasn't been a lot of thought in how we could visually customize them yet, but that that's an obvious uh, avenue for the system. Like they were asking, can I remove the scaffolding? Like we don't have that system yet, but that's that's really interesting to add that. There, I don't know if you've seen our our RDA our release date trailer that came out last week, but it was made up of all customized player bases, and it's insane how good it looks. Maybe maybe somebody can post that uh, in in the chat. Maybe that somebody will be me, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's so good looking because um, you know we we created all these cosmetic building blocks, and players just turned Foundry into an entirely different game. Like realistically. We should be flying around those bases because they're just so gorgeous. Uh, found we, we nice. Let me find it's it It's already guys. been posted, so. Ah, too. I was too slow. <laughs> finding it on all. What's funny is um, finding it on our own YouTube is harder than finding it on a bunch of other people's YouTubes. <laughs> I posted it in Google too, so now now everybody has it. Here right now I'm showing off the, uh, this is the first mining tier you mine with uh, mining drones. They come out of those small buildings and they fly to the ore vein, retrieve a bit of ore and bring it back to the machine and they repeat until it's all gone. And it looks really cool if there are like plenty of them actively mining. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's an interesting way to start the game. Like you, you originally start out with your drill, and you're you're actually just mining these rocks to get going. And then the first the first time you automate a, a part of the game, it's just so rewarding. And then hopefully you get hooked at that point, and you just want to automate everything in your life. But yeah, I mean, uh, what what made you think of using floaty drones instead of like, um, you know, a, some sort of resource node extractor? Like, is this is this StarCraft uh, inspired, or do you have another motivation <laughs> for the drones? No, it's actually not. So, my idea was, wh whenever I design systems, I try to go at least for a baseline level of of realism. And so I wasn't really happy with a mining drill that is placed on top and then it removes ore that is like several blocks away. So I thought I want to go with something that it may ever, that causes it to make sense whenever a block disappears. It's like a mining drone was there. So that was right. the, the idea here. Um, could have gone with right. drills that like that you need to place to cover the whole area of the ore but then i felt like this would be annoying to place in in the 3d voxel space so we tried to find something else uh we, we should go split dunking in this cave patrick in oh, in cave. which one i've just been to a cave oh were you you were where i'm i'm standing at a cave i've Maybe been it's the same cave no i've been at the uh at the mining cave. site Oh, this is another. Oh, mindset, you're this one. Oh yeah, uh, sure. So, we so can quite, go somebody, down here. Uh, Rad, Rad was saying it's a long time until May. You know what? It might feel that way to you, but as us trying to final the game for early <laughs> access, it feels very, very soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pucka is is, uh, is upset that I brought you over to the cave because you were just about to do the cool spaceship. <laughs> Sorry, Pucka. Oh. We'll do that. We'll do the spaceship Wait. after. We'll go for a ride. Yeah. Oh look, Let's there's actually something inside this cave. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, well, see? there's a lot in here. But there's no power, so the lights are uh -oh. off. I'm gonna put a biomass generator in. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna help out. Sure. So this seems to be an old mine. The ore is gone. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start it up again. And get some lights going, Patrick. Yeah, please do. Oh, see. Did I get enough? Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Keep adding more. Oh, yeah, and you meant power generators. Yeah, yeah. W w one would have been enough, but you know, better safe than sorry, right? I, I, I talked up this cave so much and took 
took you away from the spaceship, I feel like I have to, <laughs> I have to really sell this 10k. And this isn't a base uh, Patrick and I played, by the way. This is uh, some of the other devs made this. So we're, we're exploring it with you for the first time. Uh, is All Might infinite uh, with fracking as well? That's a question for you. Is this one, this looks like All Might that, that no longer is. Um, well, so actually, currently it is not, but we are working on, on solutions for that. Um, luckily enough, to address this issue, we have kind of overtuned how much there is in one of those Olamide patches, and there's actually quite a lot of them in total. So I think it's pretty safe to say you're not going to suffer that much from an... Oh no, Mark, what are you doing? There should be enough Olamide available, and the, the whole Olamide system and uh, way to get it is probably headed for a bit of a um, polishing phase and that will be how we're going to address that you can make that one most likely infinite as well although we haven't fully decided we need to look into how we can balance um, those circles because right now the flack the fracking fluid that is necessary to make the the mines uh, go on forever is uh, is actually all you might base. So we we don't want to make a system where it it all becomes where it snowballs too too much. But we we will find something. I could imagine uh, a way like where you can make the the Olimet infinite with very high energy energy costs, so you at least don't have a, a cross dependencies. So that makes sense. I I was I was trying to show uh, Ed Rock because there were some questions about it, uh, and I, I wanted to contribute to the conversation. <laughs> that's so, why I was I was blowing. I wasn't trying to blow up your base, Patrick. That's fine. Uh, some questions about defense and combat. Not in early access. We're look. We have motivation in early access for why you're building and what you're doing with your products uh, that we're going to talk about later. We want to kind of save some stuff for the launch trailer, uh, as well as future videos. Uh, but we're not going to have something that's going to hurt you in the initial build. We're gonna the game right now really feels like it's focused on falling in love with factory building and building systems that kind of get you into that. I think the pressure mechanics are something that we've been talking a lot about and, and we just want to make sure when we do it, we do the right version of it. Um, and so that will come if you know, that will come later. It will not be in the early access build. And and, and if we do pressure mechanics, it will it'll be optional because I, I think we fell in love with the chill uh, version of, of Foundry. Oh, where are you going, Patrick? Patrick's flying oh, well, away. I've ventured into oh yeah and i fell out it's like <laughs> yeah, i don't want to oh, yeah. no, use your jetpack yeah see slowly see, land no, no no danger no danger uh, yeah so you just saw some uh some chitter uh when when i was riding the the cargo ship this is a bug um we Actually, I have already fixed that yesterday night, but it did not make it into this preview build. So once the game is in your hands, you'll be able to safely fly on board the cargo ships. Um, and in regards to the pressure mechanic you, you brought up, um, yes, there's neither a pressure mechanic nor enemies uh, in the game at the start of early access, but hear, hear me out. <laughs> We're aware that it's it's the, probably the most requested feature. Either that or the second most requested feature. It's it's rivaling trains, obviously. So um, we hear you, and I personally actually agree with you. Uh, I'm not sure the game needs enemies, but I think the game needs some sort of pressure mechanic. Um, just right away it'll always be optional you will always be able to disable it at the start of the game we know that many people actually do not want any sort of pressure so we allow to play the way you want of course um 
the pressure mechanic itself could be many things. I've already seen it in the chat. It could be something like environmental pressure, be it weather, storms, something else you need, meteorites coming down. Like there, there are plenty of things that could be made into a pressure mechanic. We've also been thinking about stuff you need to fight and enemies, but enemies are pretty tricky to do in a 3D world because when you look at, at Factorio, it makes sense. You can build a circle around your, pay, or your base of, of towers to defend yourself. But in a 3D world, this is a lot more difficult because yeah. can they come through tunnels? Can they come through the air? You might actually have to build a, a sphere around your base. And, and at the scale of base sizes we're looking at, this would not be fun. So uh, we, we're thinking about many different alternatives uh, and we'll see where we end up. It's not the highest priority on our list as we want to make sure we really uh, make the base systems and mechanics go well uh, yeah. first, but it's yeah, on Yeah, I, I think like an interesting thing to think of is like, if you played Satisfactory before, they obviously have bad guys uh, and, and environmental dangers and monsters, but they're often like, content gates they have a, a handcrafted world where they'll place a monster that you need to kind of upgrade and, and research your way to being able to pass and uh in foundry the worlds are generated uniquely each and every time they're procedurally generated uh, every every play every play session is different they all have a seed more like minecraft so uh it's will there ever be enemies like that maybe they're just um right now foundry doesn't have a lot of the combat mechanics that that uh would make sense. So it's something that we're, we're, you know, during the development of early access, we have ideas we're going to try out, uh, but we don't have a commitment to anything. Uh, well, actually, this is about the third time I've seen the question, uh, dedicated servers at launch. So we're working on them actually right now. Uh, they kind of fell off on priority as we, uh, as we like rush to fix all the bugs and make sure it was a stable, high performance build. Uh, but now we're we're looking at trying to trying to get dedicated servers in at the last minute here. Um, no promises, but uh, we're making pro we're making progress on dedicated servers, uh, especially with the creative elements. You could you could see people wanting to to load up a server and play forever with their friends and and not have to self host. So uh, we're working hard on that to try to get it in. Right now we're just connected peer to peer. Uh, Patrick's hosting. Uh, and I'm just connected over like the Steam relay servers. So I just joined them on my Steam friends list and, uh, you know, no port and IP, none of that crazy stuff. We're also looking at LAN play for people without internet connectivity. Um, that, that's something we're also hoping to get in. People asking about structural integrity. Uh, no, we don't, we don't have any concept of structural integrity right now. It would be really fun to have like a big structural integrity update, but um, right now we, we just like, you can build the ugliest base in the world if you want. There's no one's, no one's gonna stop you from building something that is obscenely ugly right now. And uh, you know, that's something we'll maybe look at and we'll see how people play the game the way it is now or whether structural integrity added interesting uh, mechanics to it or makes it more, more fun. Yeah, uh, that's... That's accurate. The, the creativity is is your limit. So you can build it as beautiful or as ugly as you want it to be. Uh, people ask about more questions about dedicated servers, but OS, uh, if, if we launch the dedicated server at, at launch, it'll probably just be Windows. Um, it's a bit of work to, to get it over to Linux. Uh, for Don't Start, like when I did Don't Start Together, we obviously I know people prefer Linux servers, uh, but for now it's Windows. Just like a little command line thing. Uh, Buffalo was asking about weather systems. We actually have an early weather system uh, in the game. We just uh, don't have it hooked up to gameplay, so it doesn't actually happen. So I'm sure some modder will activate it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that I, now that I've mentioned its existence, I'm sure somebody will uh, it probably needs a tuning pass though, but we, we've, we've tried like windy days and like overcast cloudy storms. Uh, it's something we want to put in. It's just, it's fun. And, and you can tie it to different mechanics. Like 
uh, if you were ever to add like wind turbines or things like that, um, you could imagine, you could imagine, uh, you know, days when the wind turbines can't run or the solar is blocked out. It's, it's kind of interesting when we do like to consider how weather might impact the factories. Like we have a we have a lot of systems that that just basically aren't aren't ready to ship at early access, but they're gonna we're gonna look at player feedback and and hook them up appropriately. Is it better to condense factories closer or spread apart for better performance? So the answer is generally speaking it's better to spread them apart, but you need to understand they're two different systems in the game that cost you performance. One is the simulation in the background that actually makes everything work and the other one is the rendering, the, the front-end part. Uh, at this point performance bounds are actually mostly coming from, from rendering, although we're looking forward to people build their factories so large that we need to start uh, polish the the simulation side as well um, but this one is already running extremely well so yeah if you're hitting some some FPS bounce uh, it's better to spread things apart but optimization is a huge focus uh, on our team because we know factory games they need to be big um, so you already see a somewhat large factory here and that one runs really really smooth uh, the hardware requirements are actually really reasonable and we're very happy with with where we're currently at and we continue to improve that it's actually super good to uh, see saves of, of other people that allows us to look at what's causing some performance bottlenecks and we're looking at those specifically and try to address that so we're definitely yeah, focused like, on on that as well like i think we um we took some of the trailer saves and one of the one of the biggest trailer save bases was uh, by a fellow named falk and uh he i think we were getting like 10 to 15 fps in his trailer save and now we have it at 70 uh which is just like it's a massive massive base like with vertical giant factories like bigger than 90 percent of people will ever build and uh, we're, you know, when we see those those bases and we see why it's not running well, we're able to to address it quite quickly. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, I play this game on the Steam Deck; it runs great. Oh yeah, WeHeart was just asking. Uh, it will not be Steam Deck verified at launch. We don't have like full controller support. We don't have the uh, the text pop automatically popping up. Uh, but I I almost exclusively play games on the Steam Deck now, so uh, I'm very excited when we have a little more time to uh, get the verified badge. I, I think Foundry Foundry's the, the perfect factory game for, for the Steam Deck. Yeah. Zutkin says he's got an itch factory that had 5 FPS. Yeah, no, we've, we've done so much from the itch builds to now. It's, it's insane. <laughs> um, we have... One of one of the fellows on the game did the oxygen not included stuff, uh, Johan or Yog, uh, as we call him, and, and he's just absolutely demolished the the performance here. Uh, so we're, we're incredibly lucky to have him working on this, because so. Lord knows I was never going to get it running this fast. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I've already seen a comment here about how ugly this is, and I was about hey. to say I leave it to the audience's judgment if that is the pinnacle of creativity or something somewhat might describe as the opposite. Um, whatever you believe, this shows you uh, how you can get creative here because we have uh, a bunch of decorative shapes. Um, you can see them here. You can use them to build all sorts of uh, things and afterwards we have this handy tool, the paint roller. I've and already changed the way your house looks. You can change the colors to whatever you like and be creative and 
and build things you like. Oh yeah, see, Mark is already doing a pass on this one. Um, as yeah, you for can now, see why you can see why we asked the community to build the bases though, because if this is what this is what we're able to make. <laughs> <laughs> No offense, I, it's not my save, so I can I can I can be mean about it because I did I didn't I didn't make this space. So. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the the colorization system is currently limited to those decorative shapes, so you're not yet able to paint things like regular machines or, or conveyor belts or whatever, but. We're looking into expanding that as well. It's it's not the highest priority, um, but yeah, we we value creative gameplay a lot. So at some point, we're certainly going to to expand that as well. Um, well it, it it like um, the thing that that I really fell in love with the creative side, like watching what people made, was just a lot of times a foundry factory can look like a foundry factory. But with these new elements, people are creating things that just look phenomenally different and unique to them. And I think that's really cool. But um, uh, uh, another question about itch.io keys. Everyone who bought on itch.io is getting uh, the Steam release copy. It, I, I believe the keys will be di distributed directly through itch.io. I think you just log in and you'll get it. So um, yeah. Uh, some more questions about customization. Patrick, if, if I have green set as my color, does that uh, match the next block I place or do I have to paint it every time? Uh, you can just hold down the button and paint everything at once. Yeah. No, but if I, um, I got to find cosmetic blocks. Uh, if, if I set green, will it automatically place green? Oh, no, they start with uh, with the default color. They, they start right. with, uh, this one is right. white, but we have a couple other things that uh, have other colors as the, the default value. Yeah. And there was a question about color customization. I, I didn't say anything, but I already showed it off in parallel while you're talking. Yeah, you can create your own custom colors and paint things the, the way you like them to be. Uh, a comment about, hey, this looks a lot like, I see the resemblance to Satisfactory, but, you know, all the mechanics I'm not sure will compete with Factorio. I, you know, honestly, I don't think this game is is trying to compete with them. I think it's its own thing. Uh, those games are, we both love, everybody on the team loves both of those games. It's, uh, Foundry is is uh, the OCD 3D builder uh, for people who love the Minecraft Infinite World. It's just another, it's another option in your factory building, uh, you know, uh, arsenal. Like there's just, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's already quite a, quite a different game gameplay wise. And, uh, you know, the kind of enjoyment you get out of it. So I think, you know, if you love those games, you're probably gonna like fact, uh, Foundry, but it's gonna be different. You're gonna reach for different ones, uh, depending on your mood. They're all great. We also like Tectonica is great too. If you haven't tried that, that's another excellent factory game. Yeah, if you if you look at the very specifics, the the nitty gritty of factory gameplay mechanics, the the game is way closer to to Factorio or maybe even Dyson Sphere, um, except for the first person part, obviously, uh, than it is to to Satisfactory because we have those we have loaders. Um, we have those machine rows. It's like a couple design decisions with how the belts work and how you can put them together. Um, every game does that a bit differently. And for us, we we had uh, Factorio be the the main motivation on how the the belt system should work and and smaller details like like that. Yeah. Uh, I heard a question about uh, what's the min spec. I'm, I'm just going over to Steam uh, to go see what we have as our min spec, but it's it's pretty modest. Uh, it looks like a GTX 660 with two gigabytes of RAM uh, is recommend. You know, is the min, min spec on graphics an i3 2120? I don't know what that means, but it's it's not a it's not a recent chip. Like Foundry will run on on most gaming PCs when we look at the uh, the Steam hardware survey. Um, so it it is. 
despite, you know, being 3D and all this stuff, you know, as you get to the like crazier bases, you know, you might have frame drops and stuff on a, on a slow computer, but you'll be able to enjoy a lot of foundry, uh, even on a modest rig. Uh, so we expect performance to not be an issue at launch. You know, famous last words, but uh, <laughs> in our in our testing and compatibility, it's been it's not been one of our concerns. Yeah, we are, have been testing quite extensively uh, on lower end hardware to figure out what works well and and what doesn't. And the the min spec uh, we we ended up going with is is very reasonable and we also tried to set uh you know it's always difficult to uh evaluate properly because someone might build a factory that's like 10 times the size of this one and has it stacked into a single tower now that obviously needs higher cpu and gpu requirements uh but we definitely try to be reasonable on what we base those min specs at we want you to be able to finish the game go through the content in in reasonable machine uh and and belt count of course if you want to go for for mega factories you will need uh, a bit higher um yeah, machine. Like I know, still, yeah. I, I know we were having a conversation uh, just last week about eight versus four gigabytes of RAM. Like, there's a world where Foundry can be played in four gigabytes of RAM, which is insane. Our, our min spec's going to be eight, uh, but like you can see, like, w you know, we're on the verge of being like so low min spec that that literally everyone can play. So, um, a lot of spuds will be able to play this. That's a lot of potato computers. <laughs> is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, well, biomes have exclusive content. So, uh, there are some exclusive bits from biomes right now. Like the, you, you need to collect seeds from the various types of vegetation, uh, if you want to be able to produce it. But I don't think our ore veins are tied to specific biomes yet. Uh, and, and there's a lot more content that might be biome specific coming, but Patrick, there's nothing else that's that's biome specific right now, right? Yes, cu currently not. We have uh, different terrain blocks. Obviously, you can go and retrieve for for creative building. We have seeds uh, and plants you can retrieve from those biomes, and then you need to bring the the biome related soil to your base if you want to be able to to plant them there. Uh, we don't have anything bigger yet, but uh, it is planned eventually that certain things are, are tied to certain biomes. Um, that, that was just out of scope for now, and we want to do it properly instead of just saying, well, some ore is in this biome and another ore is in that. We want to have something that's a bit more meaningful, so it's it's on our list. Um, I, I would think of like the way I think of our early access launch and like the way we've been thinking of what needs to be in it uh, is that this is the foundation of what we're trying to build. Like, yes, we needed to have the start of all these different systems that we want to put in over the next couple of years uh, as the game grows and matures into its full state. And so, like, you know, there's some questions about what are what are what's water used for and all this. And it's like, a lot of these things have a light impact on gameplay right now, but as the game goes on and it develops, there, these systems will all become part of your sandbox. And so, we wanted to we wanted to have a foundation we can build off of and uh, to build the sort of factory game of our dreams. Uh, yeah, map size yeah. is infinite, uh, but like you know, I don't think you're going to want to build ten kilometers away from the origin uh, because. It, it you'll get like little rendering artifacts and things so um we're gonna we're doing lots of work on that but yeah the, the world generates as you go um so you'll you won't hit an end yeah um uh, and jack was asking is this the unity engine um <laughs> yeah this is this is built on unity you know obviously a lot of custom shaders and things um yeah it's, it's a unity game uh, we have no no complaints there. The game's running great. Um, you know, we we've been using Johan and I had been using Unity for a long time before Foundry uh, with with Oxygen and Ho Oxygen not included and Hot Lava. So 
uh, we knew some of the tricks to make it run and look good. So I'm it's also to ship it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also worth noting that, as you already hinted, large parts of the the heavy lifting things are, are running in an external uh, plugin that, that we coded outside of Unity to to get even more out of it. It's mostly uh, doing the sim in the background, so performance yeah. and the engine is not really a, a huge concern here at the moment. Yeah, and, and uh, that's that's the same setup as Oxygen not included used. So the, the sim ran in a, a C++ DLL separate from uh, the presentation in Unity. Uh, so, so we're in a similar state here where Unity is, is rendering all the stuff going on in the back end. Yeah. Um, Here's What's the recommended GPU. Hold on, let me get let me get that. So yeah, we have a recommended as a 970 GTX or an RX 480 or an Intel Arc A750. Um, that's what we currently have as, as recommended. I, I haven't tried a lot of these, but I know a, a combat compatibility lab at Paradox went through and found out what what ran good. Yeah, and we might do a final polishing pass on on those requirements um have you read them from the the steam page that is where yeah and i know that's that's pretty uh pretty old information I'm, right yeah i'm not sure uh i i actually think both minspec and recommended got uh, lowered a bit because of the okay. optimizations uh, optimizations we did but i'm not sure when it was last updated on the steam page we're still doing QA, uh, so we'll get the final uh, recommendation and min spec soon over there. There's another one I wanted to answer. If we're planning to add uh, Turkish language support and in general as a broader question, a any other. So we do launch with, I think, around 10 languages uh, translated professionally on our side. I do not have the full list at the back of my head. Um, I'm not sure if Turkish is part of it or not. Um, however, we do allow community translations so everyone is able to help contribute uh, and then you'll be able to use a community-based translation. So if the community is motivated enough, it should be available in the pretty much every frequently used language so we depend a yeah. bit on your help here and it worked really well in the past with the itch version so i want to thank everyone who has contributed to that uh, it's a great help we're unfortunately not able to professionally translate it in every language so your help is really appreciated here and, and not to like our obviously the professional translations are great but you know community translations are often better you know if you have a good c group because they actually play the game frequently so uh, you know your work is never wasted uh it, it's wonderful stuff and uh yeah no we really appreciate people every time somebody helps out it just feels great um we, we have we haven't, I don't think we've sent out the translations yet because we don't want to uh, spoil too many of the things. Like right now we're just flying around a base showing off uh, a very like high level overview of Foundry, but uh, we, we have a whole bunch of bunch of other stuff to show soon. So, uh, and a lot of exciting uh, narrative and end game stuff. So people were asking about, you know, what's our end game like? And, you know, we touched on it a bit here today, but we're going to talk more about it. Uh, in some of our other streams, which, by the way, game comes out May 2nd. Wishlisted if you haven't already. It would mean a lot to me personally. I <laughs> I, I, I would come to your house and thank you. And, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, we're going to be doing these streams every week, uh, talking about different, different mechanics in the game, going into more detail, trying to get, uh, you know, as we get ready to launch, launch Foundry uh, really, really, really soon. Yep. Uh... We haven't been able to answer all the questions. I'll quickly tackle two more before we, we end this here. Sure. Uh, for uh, all the others, tune in next next week again. We'll continue to answer questions. So the first one was about the water mechanics. Um, we don't have any special mechanics at this point where uh, you need to bring the water. Like we have mechanics where the water is drawn in into pipes, like the pipe 
through the pipe intake here but we don't have stuff like yet like where you need to uh, bring the voxel water to specific uh, positions but we plan to add more more gameplay around that like uh, for example have buildings be submerged for cooling or similar things like that and the second question is will there be trains uh, so we are looking into those we have done some experiments with trains in the past uh, they're quite a bit of work if you want to do them properly. Everyone on our team would love to have uh, trains in there at some point. So unless we hit some sort of major roadblock on, on that, we really hope to be able to bring you trains. And I think it's looking quite, quite good, but not for early access. Uh, it, it needs more time. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, a couple more questions. Yeah, you can build. You can build stuff, and you don't just have to blow things up. The terrain is completely modifiable. Yeah. But uh, yeah, somebody says it looks like Minecrafty water, but with higher graphics. Yeah, I think that's a fair way to put it. It no, is. I mean, yeah. um, <laughs> I mean, look, uh, we've been working on this game forever. Uh, we're super excited to share it with everyone, and. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking forward to these streams as we talk about some of the systems more and and uh, more information gets out there. Um, and and there's a lot. You know, I I just hope we get everyone excited for our vision for for where this is going because uh, this is just the start of the race for us and in, in building this game and and we want to, you know, we want to want to build it with you, specifically you. <laughs> Okay, I think this is a good spot to stop it for here. Yeah, I will throw some C4 around your map, Patrick. Uh, and... of, of course, of course. It's, it's always the way to, to end the stream, isn't it? To, to blow up everything in sight. Yeah, I'm, only, I'm just going to put 25 down. Um, just 25 can... explosives. <laughs> There's a question. Is there a sandworm from Dune in this game? We should definitely add a sandworm. <laughs> We, I haven't it seen would the be movie a nice yet. easter egg <laughs> I really want to see the movie I, I've been too busy trying to finish this with you and uh, I want to see the movie so bad uh, okay I think I think that's I think that's probably where we call the stream but yeah join us next week uh, please uh, wishlist the game if you haven't already it comes out May 2nd uh, we'll be doing these streams every week you can chat with us directly in discord uh, it's linked off on the Steam page or on the Paradox website. Uh, we're pretty responsive there. We love talking to, to you folks. So love to love to meet more of you. And uh, no, really appreciate appreciate everyone tuning in today and, and asking all their questions. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thanks for oh, joining that a, us. That was a pathetic explosion. Next time we'll blow it up properly, OK? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. Thanks, folks. You See you yeah. next week. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.